Welcome back to Moby's Kitchen. Let's make an incredible Thanksgiving turkey barbecue sandwich. Just look at this cross section, guys. Let's get right to it. I'll show you how to make this yourself. All right, we're gonna get this big old turkey breast seasoned up and injected and ready for the smoker. So the first step, we wanna dry it off so it's nice and dry. Just kind of dab it with some paper towels. Get it all over, get it as dry as you can get it. It'll help that skin crisp up too. Bottom side. You can see we've got the cavity there. And dry that out as best as you can. We're gonna season that too. Then let me wash my hands and I'll be right back with you. All right, our first step, we're gonna coat this with some nice extra virgin olive oil. Get some good olive oil too for any of your cooking adventures. This is just gonna act as a little binder. So we're just gonna kind of coat the bird here, or the breast of the bird here. A little bit here. We want that skin to get nice and crispy in the smoker. By the way, you can get that smoker going at 225, 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Preheat that so it's ready to go. All right, you don't need a ton of the olive oil. You can fill the cavity up just a little bit. And what we're gonna do, I love this Killer Hogs seasoning. I'm gonna start with the AP Killer Hog seasoning. There we go. And we'll, we'll put a little bit in the cavity. Okay, and then kind of start, just get a nice little coating around here. Should stick nice with that olive oil on there. All right. This will kind of be our base layer. This is nice and savory, has some good flavors to it. All right, next up, we're gonna finish with our Killer Hogs Hot Barbecue Rub. This is a really good one too. This is a little sweet and spicy kind of mixed. If you don't want something too spicy, you can just use their regular barbecue rub. Kimber's, Kimber's in the back there taking a drink. Always right when we start filming, she, she gets thirsty and hungry. I don't know what it is. All right, so we're gonna give this a nice coat. This will give some nice color too. It's got that paprika in it. It'll already start looking nice. Get some of that inside the cavity as well. This is bone in, so it'll stay a little juicier that way. Right. I'll be right back with you when we get this all coated up nice. Okay, so we've got our turkey breasts all seasoned up. They look beautiful already. We're gonna inject with a little bit of this Tony's uh, Creole butter. Um, now you can make your own, but I this stuff's simple. It, I've used it many times. It's really good. You can make your own injectable however you wanna do it. I'm using this for this recipe. It's simple, ready to go, easy. So you wanna do is pour some in a separate bowl here so you don't contaminate with your injector, which comes with the package too. You can use your own injector too. I'm just using it, showing you how you can do this simply at home. All right, let's, I'll just set this in here since we're gonna do it. Let's fill this up. All right, then you're gonna find where the meaty part of the breast is. Inject it about halfway in, give it a little bit. You'll see it just start filling up. This is gonna help keep that meat nice and juicy. Okay, when you run out, refill it. All right. You can see that thing just getting bigger and bigger. Once you filled up with all this juice, let's flip it over. Get the other side. All right. And just keep doing this process. Maybe like, you know, six to eight sticks per breast here. All right. A little bit more, one more round. All right. 
okay? And then if you have some little empty spots, you could always hit it again with uh, some more barbecue rub, cover up those spots where, the, where it leaks out a little bit. We're gonna let this sit for probably about 20 minutes before we get it on the actual smoker, let it kind of soak in. All right, we're out at the smoker. We're preheated to 225. We're gonna get our chicken breast on here. I'm gonna put it on here upright so it gets nice even cooking. I've got a meter, cause you got a breast here and a breast here. I've got a meter thermometer. We wanna cook this to about 160 internal. Then we're gonna take it out and let it rest for about 30 minutes. Okay, we're gonna make a cranberry barbecue sauce to go on our turkey sandwich here. So let's take a look at uh, our ingredients here. We're gonna start with our wet ingredients. We've got a quarter cup of Mike's hot honey, quarter cup of regular honey, quarter cup of ketchup, quarter cup of red wine vinegar, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Let's just call it W sauce. So make sure all that gets in there. I know some of that honey wants to stick behind. Our burner is on medium heat. That's where we're gonna start, medium heat. I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're gonna add our dry mixture here. We've got a half teaspoon of garlic salt, half teaspoon of black pepper, half teaspoon of onion powder, and one tablespoon of brown sugar. All right, then we've got about eight ounces of fresh cranberries here. And pour that all in there. And then we're gonna stir it all up. We're gonna keep this on medium and bring it to like a nice slow boil. It usually takes about, I don't know, five to seven minutes to get there. Okay, we're starting to lightly boil here. What we're gonna do is cover this up, give it about another five minutes or so, and we'll check it. Okay, it smells amazing in here. You can see our cranberries are starting to kind of turn into almost like a jam. We're gonna turn our heat down to like a low medium. Start to kind of turn into a sauce. You can see that once the cranberries burst, you can turn down that heat. Let's see how it's kind of almost turning into like a loose jelly at this point. Stir it up a little bit, and then we're gonna put it to low, cover it for maybe another five minutes and take a look at it, see our consistency. Okay, we've been on a low to low medium heat here for about seven minutes, covered. And here is our final product here. Now, you can take a stick blender if you wanna really smooth this out, but I, I like it a little, little chunky for this recipe, but if you wanna smooth it out, take your stick blender or put it in a regular blender and you can blend it up till it's really smooth. But you can see the consistency. It should stick to your spoon just like that. I mean, it's it's nice and thick. If it's too thick for you, you can always add a little bit of water to reduce it down a little bit. So this is perfect for me. I'm gonna shut this heat off. If you're gonna be cooking this recipe tomorrow or something like that and make this a day ahead, you can put this in the fridge and then take it out and reheat it. Okay, so we're gonna do some fried onion strings for this sandwich. So we're just gonna simply slice up an onion, nice and thin slices here. Uh, so we cut it in half and we're just slicing kind of like half slices. Do that with a whole yellow onion and we'll be right back with you. All right, so we've got our yellow onion all sliced up. We're gonna take some buttermilk. We're gonna cover it and let it marinate covered in the fridge for at least 30 minutes before we uh, get these breaded and fried. Fry up some bacon and save that bacon grease. We're gonna use that to fry the onions. Okay, we're gonna season our flour for our fried onions. We're gonna start with a cup of all-purpose flour and then we're gonna use our Killer Hogs AP seasoning. This is the same seasoning that we put on the turkey breasts. So we're gonna put a little bit in here. You can kind of season to taste here. I'm gonna put probably about, I don't know, about three teaspoons of that. And then we're gonna finish with our hot barbecue rub also from Killer Hogs. And this was also on the turkey. Maybe, maybe a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. All right. That'll give it some nice color. And then we're gonna kind of whisk it all together and our flour's ready for the onions to go in. Okay, so our onions have been in this buttermilk for probably about an hour, um, maybe, maybe even more. So they're nice and coated in the buttermilk. So you don't need to put anything else to have this flour stick. So I'm just kind of mixing them up. And then I'm gonna grab just a little handful of these at a time, let a little bit of that buttermilk drip off. And we're gonna get them in our flour mixture just lightly kind of get them coated. All right. And then once they're coated, you're gonna put them aside and you're just gonna repeat that process until all of your onions are coated with flour. 
All right, we're back at the stove here. We've got our bacon grease left over here and we're gonna add a little bit of avocado oil. I like avocado oil for high temperature frying. It has a higher smoke point. We don't need that much. It's not gonna be like a deep fry. It's gonna be almost like a shallow fry, kind of in between a deep fry and a shallow fry. So we wanna bring this oil up to temperature before we get the onions in there and we'll be right back. All right, let's see if our oil's hot enough. We should get a sizzle when we put this in. There we go. You don't want to overcrowd the pan. You want to give it room to breathe. So if that means a couple batches, that's fine. So get these all in your hot oil and fry till they're golden brown. All right, when they get this golden brown color, you're just going to take them out. I've got a plate lined with some paper towels. Help them drain. And then if you have another batch or two to cook, go for it. All right, let's make some garlic butter for our big old French roll that we're gonna do on this epic sandwich. And it's a big roll, so I've, gar I've uh, minced up about eight to nine good-sized cloves of garlic. It's all gonna go in there. Love garlic. And we've got a pretty good bunch here of parsley, fresh parsley diced up, nice and fine. I'm gonna put that in there. And then we're gonna finish it with some fresh Pecorino Romano. You know, my favorite cheese, grate it fresh yourself. Don't use the stuff in the green can. It doesn't taste good. It's pretty much cardboard. Get the good stuff. They sell this at Costco. Make sure it's from Italy. It's authentic. And then there, this, this has uh, just the right amount of kind of saltiness to it that it'll make. You don't really need to add salt to this garlic butter. All right, put as much as you want. I like a lot of this. It's gonna, the oils will come out and it'll brown up nice on the bread when we toast it. All right. And then we're just gonna stir this up. Kind of start. We've got some real soft and we got a stick of softened butter. We've been softening this out of the fridge for a good two or three hours. So it's nice and soft and easy to stir. So you just kind of combine this nice and well. It takes a little bit of time here to get everything combined, but we'll be right back with you and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, there's our finished garlic butter. We're gonna put this aside until it's time to spread it on that big old French roll and get that in the oven and get it toasted. All right, our turkey's hit about 160 internal, so we're gonna take it off. Be very careful here. And then what you wanna do is let this rest for about 30 minutes before you start cutting into it. All right, it's time to get our bread ready and toasted and get that garlic butter on there. What I'm gonna do, there's only like three of us eating, so I'm gonna take these, these edges off, save it for something else. Okay, we'll put these aside and then cut our cross section here. Open that up. Remember our garlic butter. Put this on here. Let's spread this on here and I'll be right back. All right, we've got our garlic butter on. I wanna put a little more Pecorino Romano cheese. That's just my style. You don't have to do this step, but why not? Can't hurt, right? Can never have too much Pecorino Romano, in my opinion. All right, we've got a 400 degree oven preheated on bake. Let's put this about the middle shelf. It's probably gonna take about seven minutes or so, but we'll watch it. All right. I think this turkey is going to be super juicy when we carve it. Listen to the skin though. It's nice and crispy. All right. So we got two breasts, one on either side of the bone here. So what you want to do is find that middle point. Let's see. Kimber smells it. We're just going to kind of run our knife on there. We want to try to keep that skin intact. All right. And we won't waste this meat, don't worry. We got the other side here. Still hot, it's been resting for 30 minutes, it's still hot. But look how juicy that is. Can you see the juice in that, Bobby? Mm-hmm. Or cut this Dripping. up. Dripping juice. All right, then we're gonna cut this up into 
pieces that we're gonna pile on that sandwich. We're just gonna cut little thin, thin pieces here. Well, we gotta just try this little edge piece. Why not, right? Mmm. Oh, guys, we're in for a treat. I'm telling you. Just gonna cut it nice and thin. Let me layer it. And we'll be right back with you. All right, sorry about the oven noise in the background, but it's cooling down. I don't even care because it, it's been a process and we are finally here to the sandwich building time. So look at our beautiful garlic bread. You can see it's nice and crispy. It's got that melty pecorino on there, that garlicky vibe. Now this is an optional step. I think just a little thin layer of mayonnaise. It's a sandwich, right? I think it, it'll add a little creaminess to it. You don't have to go crazy with this. Just a little thin layer on both sides. That's plenty, I think. All right, and this is our top. So let's put this one closer to you. And we're gonna take our beautiful turkey. I mean, this stuff is just ripping juice, guys. It is so tender, so moist. Hint, I tried a little bit off camera and it's incredible. Look how juicy that is. I mean, you can see it just shining, Bobby. It's good. I tried it too. We're just gonna layer this on. We're not gonna be shy. We're not gonna be shy. I mean, we're right around the corner to Thanksgiving. So this is kind of something you could do with your leftovers too. You don't have to do this from scratch, but we thought it was appropriate to do some kind of Thanksgiving vibe, right? All right. What do you think, Bobby? More that meat? That really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can see it glistening. I don't know if you can, but. All right. I think this is the appropriate time here to put some of this cranberry barbecue sauce. I wouldn't be shy with this stuff either. I think this, this stuff came out really good too. Yeah. This gives a little sweetness to balance all the saltiness out. All right. I think that's good. Of course, we're gonna lay down our bacon. There's a natural curve in this bacon, the way we cooked it, and there's a natural curve in that bread. So let's just follow that bread. What do you think? I think that's... There we go. Of course, our fried onions are gonna go on there. These came out really good too, guys. Delish. Bobby and I were kind Delicious. of munching on them in between. One of my favorite things. A little crispy bite. What do you think, Bobby? It looks good. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving sandwich, huh? And then why not drizzle a little bit more on top, right? That's what we're here to do. A little cranberry vibe. This to me is like better than gram regular cranberry sauce. That's just my opinion. All right, I'm gonna put our lid on. Look at that. Oh man. All right, we gotta go take some thumbnails, Bobby, and we'll be right back for taste test time. All right, let's cut this up and it is taste test time. Crispy on the outside, nice and tender on the inside. Look at that cross section, oh man. So good. Taste test time, my favorite part of the video. You all know that. Let's take a big old bite out of this thing. Give me a minute to chew it too. Mm. That tastes like Thanksgiving in a bite. It's like a barbecue version of Thanksgiving, guys. If you can imagine. Oh, that turkey's so juicy. And then the garlic bread is key. Instead of just using regular bread, like the garlic bread comes through, the sweetness from that cranberry barbecue sauce is incredible. And that little crunch from those uh, fried onions. I mean, it's a perfect sandwich. If you could, if you, you're gonna have most of these leftovers, you could make this after Thanksgiving with your leftovers, I'm telling you guys, or a version of it, you know, tweak it to your liking. I'm gonna have another bite. Mmm. Make this one at home, guys. Thanks for stopping by Moby's Kitchen. And tell your friends and family to stop by too. We have a lot more recipes coming your way.